President, please be seated. The court is now in session. Before I hand the floor to the prosecution to continue putting question through the witness, the Grafier, could you report the attendance of the parties and individuals to the proceeding today? Secretary, Mr. President, our parties to the proceeding are present except the accused in Sari who is present in the holding cell downstairs. He requests to waive his direct presence through his counsel in today's proceeding for the whole day today. The letter of waiver has been submitted to the Gravier. Thank you. The Chamber has received the request by Ying Sari dated the 26th of July 2012 through his counsel to waive his direct presence in the proceeding today and instead to follow it through a remote means. Dr. Su Saim, who is the treating doctor of the accused at the detention facility of the ECCC, examines and confirms that Mr. Insari is fatigued and he should not uh, make a lot of movement and he recommends that he should follow the proceeding from the holding cell downstairs. The chamber is of the view that Insari, who waves his direct presence in the courtroom and instead to follow it remotely through the holding cell downstairs, and that he could directly communicate with his defense counsel. The chamber agrees to the request for this uh, waiver of his direct presence and authorizes him to follow it through a remote means in the holding cell downstairs for the whole day proceeding. The AB unit you instructed to link the proceeding to the holding cell downstairs for Mr. Insari to follow it for the whole day. The floor is now given to the prosecution to continue putting questions to the witness. You may proceed. Prosecutor, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President, your honors. Good morning, everyone, and good morning, Mr. Witness. Witness, yesterday we adjourned when you stated that Port also wants to visit the zones to give the study sessions. My question is, did Port ever go to the front battlefield? Answer, yes, he did go to the battlefields to Sun Sen's place, to Koi Thun's place, and to Tamok's place, and also to An Long Wei, An Long Wei, rather. Thank you. Sonarun, Mr. President, I'd like to take the floor. President, you may proceed. I do not have any objection, but I'd like the witness to clarify what battlefield meant. Is it where the people fight one another? 
the president, uh, the prosecution, you may do that. Thank you, Mr. President. Commonly used, battlefield is the battlefield. But we will not delve deeply into this issue. However, since the issue has been raised, uh, let me put that to the witness. Mr. Witness, could you clarify what you meant by the word uh, battlefield? Answer. Battlefield is the location where soldiers are trained to and to engage in fighting. For example, in regards to Koi Trun, the battlefield was in Kampung Thom. As for Won Wait, his battlefield was at the special zone. Thank you. Sunshine regarding Sunshine and Tamok, where were they? Answer. Regarding the battlefields of these two individuals, for Sunshine, it was also at the Kampung Thom that uh, belongs to the center and a uh, uh, battlefield was part of the zone. As for one way, it, it was at the special zone and Tamok was at the southwest. Thank you. When Pol Pot went to meet uh, these people. Did he make a frequent trip to see them, to your knowledge? Answer, yes. He frequently made the trip in order to provide encouragement uh, to those people at the battlefields themselves. Thank you. Let we now return to Office S21. Can you tell us who actually were living at that Office S21 at the time? Let me interrupt uh, Mr. Witness. I think there is a, a confusion. In fact, I mean S-71. Answer. Uh, the office S-21. S-71, the Pol Pot, and uh, on Kilsom Pond, who remained there uh, rather permanently. Thank you. Regarding Pol Pot trips to various locations, when Pol Pot made those trips, who was actually in charge while he was away? Answer. When Om Pol Pot was away, Om Nun Chi and Om Kisum Pon would be there at the office. Thank you. Yesterday, you told the chamber 
that you were a messenger for Pol Pot at age 71. During that period, did you ever work as a messenger for other leaders of the party, namely Nun Chia? Answer. When they were together, there was no need to deliver any letter. However, when Om Nun Chi was at the office and Om Ma Pol Pot was at the front battlefield, then I would be used as a messenger to deliver the letter between them. Thank you. Did you know whether Nun Chi also made the trips uh, as Pol Pot did at the time? Answer, yes, he did. He made uh, as many trips as uh, Pol Pot did. Question. When Nun Chi was away on his trip, did who he go there directly, straight away, or he had to stop somewhere first? Answer. Sometimes he went directly to that the location At other time, he would have to stop uh, on the way at uh, other locations. Thank you. Can you recall the other locations where he stopped before he reached his destination? Answer. For example, when he left as 71 to zone 304 in between there was a messenger's office Did Nun Chi ever make a trip to some load? Answer. He made a trip in 1972, and I actually went with him at the time. Question. So you went along with him. Did you know the purpose of his trip to Samlod? Answer. He made his trip to Samlod in order to meet the, with the Northwest Zone leaders, namely Ruhnyam, uh, Tiu, Tasu, Tasamai, Tavaj, for instance. He also met with Hu Yun. Question. Did you know the, his purpose in meeting those people? Answer, from what I observed, and as I stated uh, pre previously, he held a meeting with those people. So the scenario was as same as I described yesterday. Thank you.
Yesterday, you also told the chamber that you listen to the radio broadcast, uh, the Beijing radio broadcast, that Ying Seri was a special envoy in support of Assam Dai Sianu. Can you tell us uh, in what language the broadcast was and who was in charge? Answer. The broadcast was in the Khmer language. And currently, it is still the same broadcast. Thank you. Do you know the reason for Ying Sari's uh, companionship through some like CNO at the time? And so I cannot uh, know the details. However, since that time, the, there was a frequent radio broadcast regarding his uh, presence there. Thank you. Based on your uh, statement, you were the one who was close and worked closely with the uh, party's leaders since 1963. The question is, in regards to the liberated zone of the CPK, how many liberated zones uh, until of the CPK or belong to the CPK until 1975? Answer. Based on the presentation and based on the information uh, from the radio broadcast, Most of the countryside uh, were the liberated zones, most of them, except the provincial towns and only some provincial towns. Thank you. At those liberated zones, to, no, to your knowledge, was there the authorization of uh, money circulation? And uh, market? Answer. Since my entry, from 1967, uh, there was a, a, a salary. I also received uh, my salary. And from 1967 to 1975, yes, there was a uh, money circulation. Thank you. To your knowledge, do you know whom were regarded as enemies by the party? Answer. As what we were told, we determined that we engage in the popular democratic revolution, and the main enemy was the American imperialist. That's the top enemy who 
had invaded many countries and they engaged in bombardment for 200 days and nights. That was in 1973. So we were educated on this point and that was the chief enemy. And another enemy was those who opposed the revolution, who refused to join the revolution. They were kind of the covert enemy, including the CIA and the KGB agents. And that we need to know the distinction between these kinds of enemies. Question, to your knowledge, did the party have any measures against those people considered to be the party's enemies? Answer, between the period of the coup d'etat of 18 March 1970 through the 75, In the, the battlefield, the measure was between the Lunar Group and the resistance forces. And the Lunar Group was uh, backed by the American group. Thank you. Can you tell us whether you knew any measures taken by the party for those who were considered to be the enemies? Answer. In the war time, all zones, sectors, and district levels were clearly educated to know about the enemies. And in the battlefield, of course, we fought against those enemies. And of the battlefield, For those who oppose the uh, revolution, but I myself did not witness any measures taken to, against those who oppose the revolution at the time. I only knew that uh, we fought the enemy in the battlefield. Thank you. Just then, you informed the chamber that he educated you and others about who were the enemies or who the enemy was. Can you tell the chamber who do you refer to? Answer. Those senior leaders in the party, they disseminate the same information, including Pol Pot, Om um Kisum Pon, Son Sen, and the rest. Thank you. Regarding the meeting by the uh, center or the uh, Congress, when the party decided to relocate their office to Stung Trong, that is to office S71, which was for the period between 1971 to 1975, 
Did you ever observe any bit meeting between the party leadership? And if there were any meetings, how frequent were the meetings? Answer. From what I observed, there were meetings amongst all the members of the center from all the zones, for example, and one was held in 1971. But it was not a frequent that kind of big meeting only took place every three or four years. Thank you. You said that there was a, a big meeting held in 1971 and then every three or four years. What about other uh, smaller meetings? Were there kind of smaller meetings held? Answer, yes, there were regular small meetings at the zones, as the battlefields, regardless of uh, the seasons, dry or rainy seasons. And frequently, the meetings are took place during the rainy seasons. Thank you. You said that there was a big meeting in 1971. Can you tell us who participated in that big meeting? Answer. The big meeting held in 1971 was a kind of a study session chaired by these two senior leaders, the two ohms, and may all the important cadres participated in that big meeting. Question. Can you recall regarding that big meeting which was participated by all cadres throughout the world and chaired by the two big people, that is Nunchi and Pol Pot? Was it also known as the Party's Congress? Answer. There were two parts to that uh, meeting, the sector and the district levels were organized at uh, Zone 304, and they were taught by these two senior leaders. And after that big meeting uh, concluded, there was another meeting for the center level. And there were quite a number of participants as well that selected throughout the country. And, but however, it was only the, the zone level who were recruited to participate in that meeting, not the district or the uh, sector levels. Question, do you still recollect how long did uh, these meetings last for each? Response, during the last meeting, it was held for over a week. Prosecutor, thank you. Do you still remember that 
among the meetings conducted at S71 from 1971 through 1975, whether Ian Sari attended any of the meeting or not. Response. Ian Sari did not attend meetings in 1971 because he had been outside of the country. Question. He did not attend meetings in 1971. What about Meetings between 1971 and 1975, according to your best recollection, did he attend any of the meetings during this period? Response. Om Ying Sari attended meetings in 1974. Because... In 1973, he accompanied uh, some Dutch Ao who came to visit uh, the liberated zone. The then king came to the zones on several occasions, and then in 1974, Yingsiri attended uh, the big meeting. Question. When... Ying Sari attended uh, that big meeting in 1974. Do you still remember the subject matter of the meeting at that time? Response. The meeting subject matter was not different from those uh, at various other meetings. It was about the general situation in and outside of the country and the situation of the resistance movement and the progress we had made so far concerning the liberated zones and people from the zones would confirm the updates on this. And live view um, were also uh, conducted. And these were the routines in the meetings. And we uh, went back uh, to each respective zones after the meeting. Question. How could you know that the meetings were all about the subject matters? Response. I knew about this because I was on duty to, protect, uh, to give protection to the meeting, and I was also tasked with catering offering food uh, to the people in the meeting. I shared uh, the conversations uh, with uh, people uh, who catering uh, the food services. And also I spotted or noted uh, the diagrams uh, on the boards, uh, the, the topics discussed in the meeting. And I really observed uh, what these uh, senior uncles uh, were doing because I would like to uh, follow their role models. I would like to grasp uh, the update because I worked with them. I needed to know uh, it's good for my work because I would like uh, to know more about this. Prosecutor, thank you. You said uh, you got it uh, at the premises. In 1975, did you also got uh, a place where the meeting was convened? Response. 
from the liberation of 1975, the 17th of April, I had a lot of work to do. And uh, because of this work commitment, uh, I did not uh, have time to uh, do the GATT uh, work. I was in charge of administration, receiving gifts, and I did not uh, have time to provide uh, security protection in meetings. Question. Before 1975, indeed before April 1975, was there any meeting you attended as a guard? Response. In 1974, there was a meeting where I went to provide uh, protection. After 1974, I went to the battlefield surrounding Phnom Penh. I was at B5 office where I provided uh, protection, uh, security protection there. Question, could you tell the court what B5 office is? Response, B5 was the command center to attack Phnom Penh, to liberate Phnom Penh. Prosecutor, you stated that, that there were meetings at B5. What were the meetings about, if you still remember? Response, the regular meetings at B5 were chaired by um, Paul Pot, who regularly stayed at the location sometime, Om um, Noon Chia, Om um, Kiu Sampon also came there. Sometimes the three of them would just convene the meeting on a regular basis, and also they met uh, when people from zones, including Son Sen, Tamok, Won Wait, Jing on Koi Tuan, Kai Pok, Sao Pum, and Ta Puong, who was from the West. He came with Ta Tum, and uh, they set the date, for example, they would meet every five days or a fortnight. It depends on the actual circumstances uh, in the battlefield. Question. At B5 office in 1975, was there any meetings of a large scale? Response. As early as 1975, there was no big meetings at the office. Indeed, there were routines, uh, uh, regular daily meetings. But uh, there were more frequent meetings at the Northwest and the West. For example, uh, Khoi Thun and Won Wait were in charge of uh, main, some main roads. Won Wait was in charge of National Road Number 4 when Tam Mok uh, was in charge of National Road Number 3. Question. 
at B5 with regard to the meetings, was there any time that the in the meeting matter of evacuation was discussed? Response. So far, as I remember that as early as uh, April 1975, uncles met to discuss about the evacuation of the population. Om Pol Pot raised this concern. Om Noon Chia, Om Kiu Sampon, Tamok, Son Sen, Koi Tun, Won Wait, Jing On, Sao Pum, all were there in the meeting. There was a meeting. Question. In that meeting, how did you know the matter, as indicated, was raised? Response. It was on the occasion that I was on duty to guard the premises. The meeting was conducted in the open in the shed uh, covered uh, by palm leaves. The roof uh, was uh, covered uh, by palm leaves. And there were map, the map of Cambodia uh, was uh, laid uh, there uh, hanging in the uh, meeting. And I heard uh, that uh, they talked about the friendly a situation where they said that Lonol could never resist any longer. We could really attack them everywhere. So it's just a matter of time that we would win the win uh, victory. Later on, indeed, they were defeated. Question. Are you aware of any measures to be taken concerning how people would be evacuated? Response. As the principal indicated in the meeting, when we conquered the city of Phnom Penh, the people had to be evacuated. The evacuation had to take place for one week or people had to be evacuated for a period of one week. Question. At that time, did you also hear anything about the necessity? Uh, what made them decide to evacuate the population from the city? Response. We learned from experience. Before we liberated Phnom Penh, we had liberated some other provincial towns. And people who engaged in the battlefields shared uh, their opinion. And they said that uh, if people remained in the cities, the party would find it difficult to control them because they had been there for long, so it would be not easy for uh, the cadres to uh, manage them. So they had to be evacuated so that we could easily conquer the cities. So uh, the idea was that if we would like to live, to survive as the resistance, we had to remove them all. And the revolutionary can then move in when the city was empty. This is what the idea shared by many people from various locations. And uh, the idea was plausible. Prosecutor, thank you. Did you also hear about 
the evacuation of the population in other areas apart from Phnom Penh in that meeting. Response. No, I didn't. However, in 1974, Udong was liberated. And the experience was obtained from this liberation. Some people who resided in Tram Kna, Nha Leung, Skun, those who engaged in these um, situations raised uh, their idea and shared their experience learned from uh, the situation. The prosecutor, thank you. Next, uh, with Mr. President Liu, uh, I would like uh, to provide uh, a document uh, to the witness and have it projected on the screen. Document. Uh, which is the record of the interview, document E3-63, under ER and in Khmer, 00228844, English ERNs, 00231409, through 10, French, 0, The President, you may proceed. Court officer is now instructed to bring the document, the hard copy, from the co-prosecutor to the witness for examination. Co-prosecutor, Mr. Witness, if you look at ERN in Khmer 00228844, it was about early April 1975 concerning the evacuation of Phnom Penh from uh, evacuation of people from Phnom Penh. Uh, let uh, the meeting led uh, by Paul Pot, and you indicated that. Uh, members of the meeting raised uh, or shared their impression concerning the evacuation plan. At the same time, you indicated there were Kiu Sompon and Nguyen Chia who also gave some input and approved the evacuation plan. My question is, could you tell the court What kind of comments made uh, by Kiu Sampon and Nguyen Chia concerning uh, the plans for the evacuation of the population? Response. I noted that Om Nguyen Chia was on his feet and raised uh, this first. He said that it was necessary and uh, needed uh, approval. And it, it, 
the evacuation was uh, noted to be necessary, and he expressed uh, his uh, position that he agreed with the plan. Question, what about uh, Mr. Kilson Pond? Did he say anything before he approved the plan? Response, uh, Om Kilson Pond also agreed uh, with the plan. And the whole meeting um, up, uh, applauded and approved the idea. The prosecutor, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I have no further questions. I thank you, Mr. Witness, very much uh, for his uh, detailed uh, testimony. And indeed, uh, the testimony will be important for ascertaining the truth and uh, f for the pursuit of justice for the victims. I would like to cede uh, the floor to my colleague uh, to proceed with further questions. The President, uh, thank you. International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the bench. Uh, good morning, Mr. Witness. Um, my name is Dale Isaac. Uh, I'm also a prosecutor with the Office of Co-Prosecutors, and I'll have uh, a number of questions for you uh, today. Um, I'd like to start uh, by continuing on uh, with some further questions on the same subject you were just discussing with my colleague, uh, which is the meeting about the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Um, just to clarify, was this a meeting that took place at the B-5 office uh, that you uh, referred to before? Response, yes, it was. And uh, where was B the B-5 office located in what village, commune, district, or province, if you could tell us? Response. B-5 was located in Tang Pon Village. I don't remember the commune, but it was in Kampung Trola District, Kampung Chenang Province. Do you know, do you remember when the B-5 office was first established? Response. The office was first established by late 1973. And when was it that you first um, went to uh, the B-5 office? Uh, what year or month, if, if you remember that detail? Response. I went to that battlefield in 1972. That was once. Uh, back then, B-1 was not yet established. I was there to accompany Om Nguyen Chia to some load. That's uh, the, the place where I first passed when traveling. It was the hometown of uh, Nguyen Chia's uh, spouse. And uh, in 1973, first I went to Chara Sdai. However, the location was not very con convenient. It was deep uh, 
uh, into uh, the jungle and uh, by late 1973 there was a new location uh, that's why B5 was uh, established at Tapon village I remember this very clearly because I was also the one who went there to inspect the location with the commune chief. We went to look at the location that would be then become the site for the V5. You mentioned that you first went through this area uh, on your trip with Noon Chea to Samlot in 1972, and you indicated that you stopped in the hometown of his spouse. What, what was that, the hometown uh, of Noon Chea's spouse that you visited? Response. It was called Srai Andong Village. And while we're talking about this general, the area of Kampong Chenang and uh, the area of Udong, were there other party leaders uh, who also had offices or bases there? in the 1973, 1974, and early 1975 time period. Response. To the west of that location, there was uh, an office of the West Zone administered by Tamok. Did San Sen uh, also have an office or base somewhere near uh, Udon? Response, yes, he did. Uh, he had an office uh, nearby. Do you recall where his San Sen's office was located? Response. It was located at Ra Smach. which is uh, near Odong provincial uh, Odong town. Uh, the location was adjacent to the rail tracks. Uh, did the party also have a military hospital in that same area? Response, yes. Who was responsible for that uh, military hospital, if you know? Answer. It was Jun Chun, the top chief in that office, and he was a doctor. And there was another person there by the name of Hong. He remained there. And uh, what about Vorn Vet? Did he also have? Uh, an officer headquarters somewhere near uh, Kampong Chenang. Uh, 
answer. One of its office was uh, together with uh, Jane on It was uh, not far from one another. It was situated in Kreang Kadap. That is a Kreang Kadap village. W was this the office for the special zone? Yes, it was uh, the office for the special zone, and there were three of them together. One way, Jane Aunt, and another person whose name I cannot recall, but uh, that person passed away already. You mentioned Chang On a couple of times this morning as one of the leaders who attended uh, some of these meetings. Uh, could you? Did you know what his position was in the party? Answer. I did not know his exact role in the party, but he was always uh, close to and uh, stay with a uh, warm weight. He was a uh, with the military, or in charge of the military together with the Von Wade. And was there a point uh, in a point of time uh, when the leaders who had been based at S-71 uh, in the Stung Trong Chinit River region all moved and uh, were located primarily at either B-5 or the other uh, party bases uh, in that area. Was there a particular point in time when most of the party leaders moved uh, into the B-5 area? Answer. No, not uh, everyone to gather together. B-5 was the command location for the front battlefields, and there were various other offices which were uh, on mobile. Do I understand that then that in the 1974 and early 1975 period that you continued to work both at the S-71 office uh, and B-5? Is, is that correct? Answer. In 1924, and early 75, I uh, became to stay permanently at B5. How much a time did Pol Pot spend at the B5 office in the 1974 and early 1975 time period? He stayed there permanently during the dry season. However, during the rainy season, he would move to S-71. What about Noon Chea? How often was he at the B-5 office in 1974 and early 1975. Answer. As for Om Manun Chia. He didn't stay long at the B-5 office the longest was for one week.
and then he would return to the rear battlefield. And how about Kusam Khan? Uh, what periods of time, how often uh, did uh, Kusam Khan come to the B-5 office? Answer. As for Om Kilsam Pon, he did not go there frequently. On a regular basis, he would remain at the rear battlefield. And when you say he remained in the rear battlefield, what, what area are you talking about? Where, where was that? So, when I say rear battlefield, I refer to the mobile offices, and there were several mobile offices. So, usually he was on mobile in those offices. What were the names of those mobile offices? Did they have a code, code number? Answer. Yes, uh, there were codes. For example, Office S24, S22, S35, S74, B17, B19, B20, so on and so forth. Thank you for telling us a little more about the B-5 office. Um, let's go back now to the meeting in April in 1975 uh, that you were discussing uh, with my colleague. Um, can you tell us again uh, approximately when it was uh, that this meeting took place in relation to the 17th of April, 1975? Answer. A little bit further to the front, there was another village that is Dok Tao, that is after we uh, moved from B5 office. Yeah, th there may have been a problem uh, with the translation of my question, which is a little long. The meeting that you were talking about regarding the evacuation of Phnom Penh, uh, wh when did that take place? Uh, to the best of your recollection, when, when was that meeting? Answer. I just stated that uh, there was a meeting in early April 1975 in Office B5. And how long uh, did the meeting last? Can you tell us that? Answer. The meeting did not last that long. It was usually for uh, one morning. So usually it uh, like started at 7 a.m. and concluded around 10 a.m.
And you said that the meeting took place uh, in a shed uh, that was covered uh, by palm leaves. Um, where were you physically located in relation to the shed? Were you inside or, or were you outside? Answer. The, there was no coconut trees uh, nearby at the meeting place. The meeting place actually took part in the middle of a jungle, and uh, there were trees nearby, and they used the uh, palm leaves to cover as the roof for that uh, meeting place and a bus nearby. The, so we have a better understanding. Where, where the meeting took place, was there actually a building or structure that had uh, walls? And if so, what were the walls made of? Answer. As I stated, there were no houses around and there was no wall. It was held and opened. There was only roof and the surrounded area were just uh, rice fields and there was a small hill nearby, but there were no walls. Even the location where Om Pol Pot uh, stay there was also a small jungle nearby, and usually they would reside near a small hill, and that refers to many of those leaders' residences. And while the leaders were meeting and having this discussion about the evacuation of Phnom Penh, how, how close were you to them? Answer. I was on the, the other side of the small hill, and the meeting took place just on the other side. From where you were located, were you able to hear what was being discussed by the leaders during this meeting? Answered. I heard the Butterfield Committees reported about the situation, and after the report, then Om Number One would summarize, and then he would uh, propose the measures. The measures, including both the military measures as well as the evacuation measure. That was the last uh, battlefield and all the battlefield commanders would report about the situation at each respective battlefield. And then they decided that it would be better and effective if all people were to be evacuated. And when the decision was made on whether or not to evacuate, were all the leaders who were present at the meeting asked whether or not they agreed that Phnom Penh should be evacuated? And so, I just stated that he raised or proposed the measures, and uh, Om Noon Chi also stood up and uh, agreed to the measure. 
So everyone of the participants uh, agreed to the measure and applauded. Usually, applauding means they agree to the proposal. You, you told my colleague that uh, some of the people at the meeting uh, discussed uh, their experiences uh, when other cities had been liberated. Um, do you remember uh, who it was, which of the people who were present uh, that discussed uh, their experiences with the liberations of other cities? Answer. There were liberations in various uh, towns and cities, and in the presentation, he explained to us about our experiments in liberating those towns and cities. Om Nunji also made that uh, presentation regarding the good points from the experimenting with liberating those towns and cities in order to protect the forces. Also, this issue was uh, mentioned during the major meetings as part of the experience uh, we had learned from liberating those towns and cities. Just so, to make sure I, I understand your answer, it, uh, it was Pol Pot and Noon Chea who talked about the evacuations of other cities. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. And uh, during this instruction, uh, during this meeting, uh, were any instructions given to the uh, military or zone commanders who were present uh, on uh, what they were to do uh, uh, related to the evacuation? Uh, did you hear any instructions uh, given to them as to what they were to go back and do in their zones? I saw them uh, drawing uh, s sketches on the uh, board, the targets that everyone were to be in charge of. So the drawing was made uh, by uh, first the first board on the blackboard. And then those people who were charged with those uh, spearhead or targets uh, need to be responsible for that. And did you hear anyone at the meeting express any concerns about evacuating all the people from Phnom Penh? Did anyone have any concerns about doing that? Answer. It seems there was no one to made uh, such a comment uh, during uh, that meeting. Thank you. You also mentioned to my colleague that one of the uh, cities that had been evacuated uh, before uh, was the city of Udong. Uh, what do you recall about the liberation and evacuation of Udong. Uh, first of all, where were you uh, located, or where were you when Udong was first liberated 
uh, by the Khmer Rouge forces. Answer. I was at that office uh, B5 and immediately after the liberation of Dong, I went through it and all the way, I went all the way to Stung Trong. The, uh, the translation was a little unclear. Did, did you say that after uh, the liberation of Udong, you traveled through there on your way back to Stung Trong? Is that, is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. Do you remember uh, when it was that Udong was uh, liberated? Answer, I cannot recall the date, but it was in April. Actually, the attack started from January, but it was uh, liberated in April. Is that April of 1974? <laughs> Answer, I refer to 1974. Because Udong was liberated in 74. And what was done with the residents of Udong uh, when it was liberated uh, by the CPK forces? Answer. So when I entered the area, it was deadly quiet. There was no one. Mainly to the west of the river, that is the way to Om Leng, or to Peng Chiu Ora, they went that way. So they evacuated from the uh, town center and they spread to the nearby villages and the some were on the way. Um, how soon was it after the liberation of Udong that you traveled to the city? As I recall, it was about a week after. The town had been liberated. However, the lunar soldiers were still present at the Tepanom school, and it took another week to defeat them at that school at uh, Wat Tebanam. And that uh, Wat Tebanam or Banam Pagoda was close to Banam uh, school. Who, who was with you uh, when you traveled uh, through Udong uh, one week after it was liberated? Answer. I uh, went by myself. As I stated earlier, I usually traveled by myself on a motorbike. And you indicated that you were at the B5 office at the time of the liberation. 
were any of the party leaders uh, at the B5 office at that at that time when you were there? Answer, yes, they were. Who was uh, who was there at that time? Answer. On the regular basis, uh, Pol Pot would be there. Let me clarify a little bit uh, further. At B5, he actually asked me to uh, monitor the road all the way to Stung Trong. So I was assigned uh, by him to uh, monitor that road. The reason that you left the B5 office and went through Udong uh, to Stung Chong uh, was because of this assignment from Pol Pot. Do I understand? Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. And what was it that Pol Pot wanted you to monitor uh, when you uh, went to Udong and continued on? from there to Stung Trong. What is it that he wanted you to uh, look for? Answer. So he assigned me to check on the situation along the road. And number two, to deliver a letter to Koi Thun. At that time, Koi, team were, Koi Thun was at the Bathia Mountain. He is stationed there, so I also delivered a letter to him. And after you completed this assignment, did you report back to Pol Pot on the situation? So after I reached the destination and after having made a Koi Thun, I went to Stung Trong. Actually, I also have an, had another letter at the time for Omar Noon Chia. He was at Office 74 then. What, what was Office uh, uh, 74 or S74, uh, what was that office? Answer. Office S71, as the witness says, is located near Stung Chimut River. But S24 was near the other river, near Humi, near the Daikrohom area, which was situated close to the district town of Stung Trong. I want to ask you now about a, a statement uh, that we have uh, from, from you uh, from an earlier interview uh, m many years before you spoke to the investigating judges. Um, but first, uh, I'd like to ask you, do you remember uh, being interviewed by a British journalist named Philip Short? This would have been probably in the late 1990s or early 2000s. Do you remember giving an interview to a, a British journalist named Philip Short?
response, yes, I do. He interviewed me and gave me some documents, either in English or French. I don't re remember the president in the rooms. Uh, thank you, Mr. co prosecutor and the witness. Uh, since it is now appropriate time for the adjournment, uh, we would adjourn for 20 minutes. Court officer is now instructed to assist uh, the witness and his jury counsel during the adjournment and have them return to the courtroom by 10 to 11. ส่งเจนกรองจอ